you very much, uh, President Gatewood. Uh, we're very pleased to be here on the, on the Cascade campus. Uh, we're along one of our busiest lines of the TriMet system, the Line 72. It actually runs from Clackamas County to Swan Island. And right in front of this uh, great Cascades campus that we're at right now, it is our busiest bus line in the system. And we're at one of the busiest locations along that bus line. And we're here to launch what I would call the new generation of hybrids. Um, and we're very pleased to have gotten a $2.5 million federal clean fuels grant that allowed us to purchase this new technology and begin to pilot it with brand new technology here in Portland, Oregon, USA. And I think that's really important. It continues to demonstrate that we're a leader in transit technology. It's important to have these low emission, fully accessible vehicles on this line because of our commitment to health and our commitment to equity. These, this is entirely new technology. Um, the, the best analogy I can give you is that this is a Chevy Volt. The actual propulsion of the bus is through an electric motor and the diesel engine actually just turns a generator that charges the batteries. And so it's a very different kind of hybrid technology than we've ever had on our property before. And it's, and it's uh, really the, the whole intent of the Clean Fuels Program is to test new technology, see if it's roadworthy and, and, and able to be, to sort of withstand the rigors of public transportation. Uh, and we're very hopeful that this will do that with as much as a 50% fuel, fuel savings uh, coming from it. But we're really pleased to be, uh, uh, be able to pilot these here in Portland, Oregon. And again, this is a place where we're committed to the environment and the clean air, uh, and hopefully we can uh, begin to grow our presence of these particularly clean air buses over time. One, two, three. I know. Uh, as you know, we've really made it a priority to replace our buses, not only because um, it, they're older than they should be, uh, we are transitioning to uh, low floor buses, but this is a, also a great efficiency measure for us because newer buses cost less to maintain, low floor buses uh, go through the boarding process quick, more quickly so we can move the buses along in the fleet. So to answer your question, it's a high priority for us. Um, we've procured with this, these hybrids 55 buses uh, that are on the flu, new buses that are on the road right now. We have another 70 that will start coming into service in May. And then we hope with the budget that we approve uh, next year that there'll be another 40 to 60 in the following year. At that pace, it'll be three to four years before we have all low floor buses. Um, and, um, but again, I think in three to four years, we'd also be bringing the average age of the fleet down to where it should be, which we think is probably around eight years. Mm -hmm. uh, we continually evaluate that to see if it really makes a difference and uh, if it's cost effective us for, for to add that additional bus to the fleet. Um, there are always uh, issues in terms of assignment and flexibility of fleet and other things that come into play, um, but that's an ongoing piece of evaluation for us. Right now, we have sort of judged that, frankly, it's easier for us to put a, an extra bus to alleviate crowding, which we'll hopefully do again in the next budget year. We're on the lines that are, that are overcrowded rather than move to new technology. But we're constantly looking at that balance and trying to get to the right, the right balance. That, that actually is true and mm -hmm. part of it is the premium for the, the buses and part of it is the, uh, the extra effort of actually maintaining the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the longer sized buses.